Have you ever wondered how a figure skater can change their speed? When a person or object flips, twirls, spins, pirouettes, or rotates, it is moving. However, in reality, it doesn't go anywhere. That's when the concept of angular momentum comes into play. Angular momentum explains how much power an object has when it's spinning around in a circle. A few months ago, I wanted to learn how to do a standing backflip. I went online and found a bunch of tutorial videos. Eventually, with a bit of practice, I was able to achieve it. Although there are a number of other physics concepts involved in the explanation of a flip, such as Newton's first law and torque, I will only be focusing on angular momentum. The product of I, the moment of inertia, and omega, the angular velocity, equals L, the angular momentum. The principle of conservation of angular momentum means that the angular momentum is constant throughout the whole duration of the flip if we don't apply any new external forces. Indirect variation explains why an object's angular velocity increases or decreases as its moment of inertia changes. The moment of inertia is basically how the mass is distributed between a person or object. I would expect to be able to flip faster if I get into a tuck position rather than getting into a fully extended layout position. I've taken two identical tubes and attached two tennis balls to them. In the first case, I've taped the balls to each end. In the second case, I've attached them to the center of the tube. They both weigh the same amount. However, the one with the balls attached to the end will have a larger moment of inertia than the ones that are taped to the center. You see, it's easier to rotate the ones with the balls taped to the center. Average angular velocity is the change of angular position over time. In physics, we'll often use radians per second. However, in my experiment, I'll be using revolutions per second. In real life, every time you're in a car, you measure angular velocity using RPMs, revolutions per minute. As shown on this graphic, the angular momentum is constant throughout the whole duration of the flip. However, during the course of the flip, the angular velocity increases, while the moment of inertia decreases, and vice versa. Enough of the theory, now on to the practice. Let's measure my angular velocity when performing two different flips. On the left, you can see that I'm performing a layout, while on the right, I do a back tuck. With the back tuck, I'm able to do half a rotation in 1.43 seconds, while in layout position, it takes almost twice as long at 2.5 seconds. Why do we care about angular momentum? Because in the real world, we often have multiple objects that interact with each other having different angular momenta. We can add each of those to get a total system angular momentum that won't change over time without an external object messing things up with the external torque. Take the helicopter. The top blade is rotating in one direction, exerting angular momentum. In order to stabilize the chopper, they add a tail blade. I hope that I was able to shed some light on the concept of angular momentum. Thank you for watching this year's Breakthrough Junior Challenge.